After 15 years of hunting, I had my first Roswell incident and found my first downed weather balloon with some strange writing. This says it's a harmless weather experiment. And the next tag warns me that I shouldn't touch it and that it could explode. Lucky for me, the balloon had already popped because I probably would have touched it and that would have been the end of the videos. Car Jesus, as you probably figured out, I went hunting up in North Texas and shortly after taking this picture, I spied daylight hogs back here along the wood line. Here's a map of the hunting area. I'm down there at the X. The hogs appeared north of me. I gathered up my gear and the hogs headed off into the wood line, across the fence. So I took off after them, crossing at the gate. I lost them for a while before spying them again from here. And the hogs again moved away from me through the trees. So I circled around along the road. By this time it's well after dark. Headed towards the hogs. Got to right here where I took my shot. At this point, I'm about an hour into my stalk. I can barely see the hogs in the distance. And I've got quite a ways to travel on the road before cutting across the field to get a better angle on them. So here I've moved up the road. I'm getting video through my IR Hunter Mark III thermal weapon sight. And I'm going to be shooting a Lone Star Armory TX-15 multi-purpose carbine enhanced in 6.5 Grindel. And I'm going to be shooting Lapua Sinar and Horned DSST bullets loaded by Druid Hill Armory into Starline Brass. Starting off with the Lapua Sinar as my opening shot. And I moved into position. I've got a fence directly in front of me. I can't move any farther forward. I've got trees off to my left and the hogs are moving off to my left and I'm slowly losing sight of them. And I decide the only thing I can do is shoot the remaining hog and see what comes of it. Here we go. I really would have liked to have tagged that hog, but the bullet goes into the hillside. And I put a final shot into the hog that's moving too much. And at this point, all the hogs have disappeared. I've got two downed hogs. Both of them are 40 to 50 pound gilts, and they are both a mess. So I blotted out the more offensive parts of the image. And you know, if I'm going to start off the night with just two hogs, making it two females is the way to do it. Early the next morning, I'm sitting up on a hilltop looking down on a hayfield, and I've got hogs way out there in the distance. The lighter colored dots are wet hogs, and the dark ones are the drier hogs. Looks like they're out there at about 550 yards or so. It's going to be a long stalk. I've made it down the hill, and you can see the splotched or black and white hogs are the ones that are partially wet, and the ones that are mostly dark are mostly dry. Now because I've got cattle in the pasture with the hogs and I've got cattle across the road, I've actually had to move beyond where the hogs were and shooting back in the opposite direction in order to deconflict my shots. Alright, I'm going to start off with this female. Here we go. Alright, I've got a wounded hog. And I'm going to do my best to put him down as soon as possible. However, in doing so, I just about lose the rest of my shooting opportunities as the hogs make it into the cattle. And my shooting is done. With the grass being short, I didn't have any trouble finding the hogs with my Ace Beam H30 headlamp. It has an excellent throw. As you can see, looking back at the first hog there at 60 yards, you can see it just fine. Brass Catcher by Tactical Brass Recovery. These were my last two hogs of the night. A 75 pound gilt that was not pregnant and an 85 pound boar. Check out Carpe Analysis, the Trauma Diaries number 47. I'll put a link at the end of the video and I'll be taking a look at the damage done by the Lapua Sinar bullets.
Carpe sus, my friends.